And I don't want to break them up. I want Benito to have little watered down Kardashian <laughs> babies. <laughs> Why would you wish that on him? I don't know. He already did it to himself. So I'm like, hey, if you're there, you might as well get a baby out of the deal. Right. Hola, mi gente. Hey, what's up, people? Welcome back to uh, this week's episode of Corazon Chronicles. I'm your host, Ray, joined by... I'm Janice, guys. Let's go. You guys are familiar with us by now. <laughs> so we are back at it, right? And uh, we've got some spicy topics to go on. I, I, I think you guys had a... Uh, a good experience with the last podcast with the power control wheels and stuff. So, you know, thank you guys for that. Um, and I know that you pretty much are leading this, ep this episode today as far as the topics goes. Yeah, we're talking all about breakups, y'all, because I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like 2023 is the year of breakups. There have mm. been so many celebrity couples who have broken up. So we're going to dig into like what might be happening. We're going to talk about this phenomenon in dating now that's called quiet dumping yeah i didn't know what that was either guys. i was like oh shit <laughs> and then we're also going to talk about whether marriage is obsolete in this day and age so let's or like off. a dying trend i guess yeah yeah i i think um you know there's a lot of like relationship trends that are being questioned mm. um there's just a lot of status quo i think in society right now that um, it's just making people question, like, is marriage a valid thing? Do you even need to be in relationships, right? right. We're talking about random things like polyamory and pansexualism and all these things, right? <laughs> I feel like there's just, like, all these conversations around relating to other people that um, we just didn't have growing up. And mm. so I think it's a, it's a very interesting time to, like, analyze what's happening with the, in the world of human connection. Yeah, and I think it also varies, too, based on, like, where you're at in the country. You know, obviously, the city life is going to be a lot more fast-paced. It's, you know, the, it's a numbers game. There's a lot more people. And then, you know, in a small little country town like where I grew up, it's like... You're going to marry a high school sweetheart. Yeah, whoever you lose your virginity to is pretty much who you're going to marry. <laughs> You know? Yeah, you know, I think back to, like, you know, kind of the narratives that my parents taught me about relationships and they were like high school sweethearts in a way and they mm, were like mm -hmm. each other's firsts so there was almost this expectation that like my high school boyfriend was gonna be my husband yeah but that didn't turn out to be the case and i know my mom like when i told her i was breaking up with him she was like freaking out about it she's mm. like what do you mean That's like it? you know yeah this is just supposed to be your person like this idea of like dating and hooking up with other people. It's just not a thing from for them back in, in that day. So yeah, yeah. they just don't get it. They don't yeah. get all the looseness of the kids these days. And loose <laughs> is, that's exactly what it is. That's yeah. a perfect term. <laughs> Fucking loose as a goose, my guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first off, let's dive into the conversation around celebrity breakups. Okay, so I love me some reality TV and some gossip. First of all, Benito and Kendall are going strong. Oh, God, so that's this is the good. one couple I would love to break up because... Cheers for them. I don't want to break them up. I want Benito to have little watered-down Kardashian babies. <laughs> Why would you wish that on him? <laughs> I don't know. He already did it to himself. So I'm like, hey, if you're there, you might as well get a baby out of the deal, I my boy. I mean... Yeah, I mean the Kardashians do have a I lot of money. I think all the right. all the men that have been involved with the the Kardashians, whether they had it on their own or they got it from, uh, what was the one dude Scott Disick or some shit? Yeah, right. Yeah. Look at this guy's balling it. I mean, I know he's got yeah. family money. They but definitely put people on. There's stuff happening. Yeah. You know, whether they're giving you alimony or we child support, that, there's something else happening. That Gucci collab with Kendall and mm. Benito was like this is only happening because you're with the Kardashian. Like, let's be fucking honest because these people have really, really serious ties in the fashion industry. Yeah. And well, yeah, that was a crazy thing because <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised that like, I don't know what the whole story was with Balenciaga, but I remember they went through like a whole PR crisis or whatever. And I know that they would have paid a huge amount to have someone of color like that to come yeah. back and put their shit on, you know? So yeah. All right. It's wild. Okay, so let's first cover some of the celebrity breakups that you may or may not be aware of. Obviously, we've talked about Rosalia and Raul Alejandro. Mm -hmm. That was a big one in the Latin music Ooh. world. And, and what did he do the other day? He deleted his entire Instagram, he right? Did, which probably means he's coming out with an album because that's just it's what, what they these do. people do. Right. They, they just they scrub the whole yeah. past. Um, so we had them. We had Britney Spears and her husband, Sam Ashgari, who they, I was blown away by, by this just because he literally like stuck by her through this whole conservatorship thing. And like 
they got married right after, you know, the courts gave her her rights back to her estate and whatnot. Mm. And like less than two years later, they got divorced. So I'm just like, she's probably batshit fucking crazy. Well, she's probably like, she's been, you know, inside the house in the mansion, tr- just cooped up, yeah. unlimited access to whatever the fuck she wants. I know she's not sober in that house. No, no. I wouldn't be sober in the house <laughs> and I'm not even bad on anything. Right. Like, but I would be like, I'm fucking bored, losing my mind. Bored in the Tequila house in the can house only board. do so much. <laughs> You know what I mean? Where's the other stuff? Yeah, Brittany. Poor thing. I mean, we're going to pray for her, too. Ariana Grande and her husband, Dalton Gomez, who tied the knot in 2021, are now getting divorced. Damn, I didn't even know that she remarried She was very secret about, like, that relationship. I had no idea she was even married either. The only thing I remember about her was, like, the whole Pete Davidson fling. But then after that, I didn't realize she got uh, married. the Mac Miller thing was what I really knew her from. Mm. Because they were, like, you know, head over heels for each other and then, like, they went through the breakup and then, you know, Mac dies while she's fucking Pete Davidson. Yeah. Like, it's just a weird people like being like, oh, you know, he was doing drugs but to get over you. But I don't know. There's a lot more to it. He seemed like he was he was doing his own thing. He yeah. was in the studio recording music when he died. Yeah, that was wild. Uh, Sofia Vergara and her husband, Joe Manginello, they were married for seven years. You got to say Manginello. Manginello. <laughs> <laughs> but they were like couples goals. You would see them out on the red carpet and stuff, and they would be like so Who lovey-dovey. So Sofia Vergara is the lady from uh, that show on ABC that there she's she's got like a heavy accent. Oh, I know wasn't who you're she talking on, about. Um, she's she's been in the she's been in the limelight for years. Yeah, wasn't she's, she on one of those like competition shows too, like The Voice or uh, she, America's Got Talent? She, she was on there, but she does have that loud nasally yes, yes, yes. Latina voice. <laughs> yeah, she's very Latina. I'm still here for it. Yeah, so they're bre- breaking up as well. Um, Justin Trudeau and Sophie Gregoire, which Justin Trudeau was the Canadian Prime Minister. They were together mm. for 18 years. Everybody's saying he's a piece of shit. <laughs> Well, we're I mean, not going to get into politics. Well, I don't know the, show, the politics but. at all, but it's like every time I'm on my shorts or something, there's something that pops up. And like the dude like went to like see Trudeau walk from one building to the next. And he like got up real close and acted like he wanted to shake his hand. And he's like, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it just and just looked at him and just kept it moving. I'm like, I'm Damn, sure politicians bro. are used to that though, you know. Oh, yeah, but he's lucky that the guy just wanted to say you're a piece of shit. Look at what <laughs> fucking happened to Reagan and Kennedy and everybody else. See, everybody's getting gunned down and shit. It's yeah. crazy. I don't want to be in politics nowadays. It's yeah. way toxic. Fuck that. And uh, Tina Knowles and Richard Lawson. So Tina Knowles is Beyonce's mom. She's also getting divorced too. After she was with, you know, obviously this is not um, Beyonce's dad. She got remarried after the fact, but they're breaking up. Um, it, there's just a lot of celebrity breakups happening. And so one of the theories, if you are into astrology, <laughs> is Venus going into retrograde. So I know she's we've been talking about this for a while. We've folks. heard about like Mercury going into retrograde. I think that's way more common. And basically what happens when Mercury goes into retrograde is that um, allegedly technology goes haywire like you're gonna have a lot of tech issues Mm. um you might have issues with like communication so like don't make important decisions you know there's just some astrological planetary shit that apparently like affects how we interact on earth and so when it comes to venus venus is the planet that's associated with love Mm. and relationships i didn't even know that yes so um for the uninitiated A Venus retrograde is an astrological phenomenon that occurs when the planet Venus appears to be moving backwards in its orbit as observed from Earth. In reality, planets do not change their direction of motion, but due to varying speeds of the planet's orbits, there are times where a planet appears to like slow down, stop, and then start going in reverse for a Mm. period of time. Mm. And so ancient astrologers have linked this appearance of a reversing planet to like significant things that happen on, on Earth. Wow. So because Venus is associated with love, relationships, beauty, harmony, money, and values, during a Venus retrograde, it might seem as if the qualities and influences associated with the planet are intensified. So what can that look like? Mm. Intensified emotions, dramatic conflict, reconnecting with exes and past love interests, and just overall reevaluation of your romantic relationships, all of which could lead to people breaking up. So as a matter of fact, I have a couple of things I want to <laughs> My Shut ex up. reached out to me. We're going to try to rekindle things. Oh, God. And this has been fun, but 
Venus is in retrograde. Yeah, so that's <laughs> if y'all are using the excuse of Venus being in retrograde to break up with your partner, I mean, to each their own. We're going to give you, she's <laughs> actually going to give you some prime examples of how to break up with your partner <laughs> yes. in a very strategic way. Absolutely. I think that's a perfect transition for us to <laughs> go into the quiet dumping uh, phenomenon. If this you will. is this is Janice's classroom today, folks, because I'm new to all this too. But <laughs> as we go down this journey together, I think we'll start to see that a lot of people do these things unbeknownst to them. I would say yes. Okay, I'm guilty so of it too. We know about things like ghosting, right? Like, what is ghosting for you? Ghosting for me is just um, you know you're talking to somebody and then literally out of the blue, there's no response. Maybe you're blocked. The bubble's going green now. <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> Did we ghost each other? No, it was a mutual block. Okay. Well, it was a mutual... Initiated by you. It was a mutual <laughs> thing. I don't know. No, lot, it was. I have more, the evidence. Lawn Mordida was pretty like, tough. Well, I think this is where we block each other. Yeah. I recall those exact words. Yeah, because I just felt like it was getting a little toxic, right? <laughs> I didn't want it to get to the point because, you know... You start saying dumb shit. Yeah, and like, it, I didn't really have anything dumb to say to you in the first place. So yeah. I was just like, well, I guess we'll just block it. You know, it's yes. fine. I don't really care. Um but so ghosting is, is yeah, you're, you're, you literally disappear off the face of the earth. You think something's going good with somebody and then all of a sudden they're gone. She gone. That's just traumatic. You know, I think it's terrible just because I think everybody deserves some sort of explanation, Ugh. whether or not you're vibing or not. Right. Like it's like, let's be fucking grown. If you're grown enough to like climb in bed with somebody, initiate this whole shit, like be grown enough to have the conversation. Otherwise don't be out here causing mayhem in the dating world. I mean, I see what you're saying, but. To play devil's advocate, to be the person who has to have the difficult conversation, not everybody can deal with that. Not everybody likes to see somebody cry or be the reason of that. And then the last thing, I mean, well, the biggest thing for me would be I don't, if I've gotten to the point where I'm ready to have this conversation, then I, I, I can't be swayed or mm -hmm. sold to come back. You don't so, want somebody to try to convince you otherwise? Yeah, I don't want to sit there through the bullshit. I don't want to sit there and watch this person cry, break down. Um, gaslight, reverse psychology, become the victim in some type of fucked up situation. And then all of a sudden I'm feeling bad and I'm over here like, okay. <laughs> I know? guess and, let's try and work on and it. There's another year down the drain. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fair. But at the same time, like if you don't want to deal with the person up front, you don't have to like break up in person, right? You could send a text. Damn. I think at least like, yes, text breakups are fucking like so voice, cringy. Voice note. Just do the voice yeah. note where you hold it and record <laughs> and then you can send it. It's much, I think it's, that's like better. I think it's, it's just have the conversation, whatever medium, whatever form like you can deal with because I've seen people be ghosted after having like whole ass relationships like mm. for six months plus mm. and then all of a sudden the person fucking disappears and just like the mental anguish and torment it's almost like somebody dies right right and you're just like how the fuck do you move on you don't know how they died you don't know if they're okay you don't know if they're not you don't know if they got back with an ex like it's just there's so much shit in the air and then so, i've seen people like literally wait because they're just like waiting for this person to reappear and i'm like that's crazy. You're like, hey, can I have my stuff back? Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I get my hoodie back, please? It's crazy. So I just like, I, I hate the idea of ghosting. And I also hate this trend called zombing, which I've personally experienced. Have you heard of zombing? I have not. Okay, so I'm zombing. An old, I'm an old man. Yeah. <laughs> zombing is when you get ghosted and then this person randomly reappears like a zombie. I think you've had this happen, right? I have had this happen. You've been a ghoster before, too. Let's face it. Mm. You've ghosted. Yeah, I, yeah, she, I have to really have. I'm a, I'm a blocker. Like, I'm just like, if I'm done with this, I'm just going to block you and we're going to pretend I never existed. Damn. Yeah. Toxicity. Um, would I do it now? No. <laughs> yes, you would. No, I would. <laughs> yes, you would. So, zombie, yes, this has actually happened to me. So, it was a couple months after we got back together. Mm. I got a random text message from a number I did not have saved in my phone. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? And it was a guy that I had like gone on one date with. And then he ghosted me. And he was like, hey, how you been? Right. Um, I was traveling. I'd love to get together again. And I'm just like. The boys are back in town. What? Like this shit is crazy. I'm like, I have a whole ass man. But thank you. 
Right. I guess I left some sort of fucking impression. Well, you know, I guess how was he supposed to know, right? Without dropping a little fish in line. And yeah. Like, Let me just see what bites. Right. And he was like, oh, that, I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'd love to stay in touch. Right. Da, da, da. I'm like, mm, at this point, I'm like, yeah, it's time to block. So that, that's when you send him the workbook. <laughs> yes. Sign up for a consultation. <laughs> Paid, please. By the way, if you guys remember the story that Janice said, was it the last episode? Uh, no, I actually, it was on Instagram, on my Yo Quiero Dinero But we Instagram. talked about it on the podcast. No, we didn't talk about it. Yes, we did. The, about the, the, did I? Yeah. Oh, we did. Yes, yeah, you're right. We did talk about yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. So anyways, Janice talks about this guy that was a friend of her ex's or something and messaged her just trying to like catch up or whatever and wanted to pick her brain. And I guess he ended up feeling some type of way, mm, right? Because you, you never gave the answer or what he said. That's right. Right. So he, he responded after she sent him um, a, a, a link to her, her, her course or something for like two grand. And then he's like, um, well, you go ahead. Yeah. No, he got very upset about the fact that I was like, um, just because you're friends with my ex does not give you rights to my time does not make you my friend. I mean, even the fact that I didn't have his number, he didn't have my number. I'm just like, we're not friends, bro. Right, right. Like we are acquaintances because of the people that we were connected with. And so he proceeded to tell me that I have a, um, kind of a fucked up way of doing business. If that's the way that I, you know, approach clients, yeah, he's it's like, just is sending me in my link. Pitch? Is that your, yeah. Is that your sales he approach? Like you DM'd him. I'm like, I, I'm, I don't need your money, sir. First of all. And secondly, this idea that like you're entitled to quote unquote pick my brain because in some warped fucking world you thought we were friends because you're my ex's fraternity brother. I'm just like, first of all, I should be charging you double just facts. for being associated with that bullshit. Big facts. And the fact that I even responded in general and gave you a way to communicate with me. Yeah. Just because you didn't like it doesn't mean that somehow I'm a bitch or that I'm entitled or that I think I'm better than people. I'm just like, no, I don't perform free labor for people and he's got in general. A, he's got a girl, right? Yes, he has yeah. a whole ass wife. Yeah. And you right. know what's hilarious? She's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> when I did the Instagram reel and when I was talking about this, she started following me. Uh... And I knew her screen name. So I said, blocked. And then she got another one of her, the wives of the circle to follow me. And then I blocked her too. So they were just trying to like scope out my shit. And I was like, well, all of y'all are now blocked and not entitled to my energy and time. That's weird because isn't your, your page open? Yes, but now they're blocked. So they can't see it. I mean, if they want to go and be cringy and create like fake profiles just to fucking stalk me. I don't know what they're, what the point of that is though, because it's just a business page. It's not like you're posting where you're eating at for lunch or no. anything like that. They wanted that. to see that specific post and it's just like, I didn't name names. I didn't show no photos of nobody. You think, I guess he must have saw it and showed them. I don't know if it was him or, uh, you know, I'm sure there's other people within that circle sure. that follow me. I mean, I have a shit ton of followers, so I'm not going to go through and like <laughs> fucking audit 52,000 people. And they're not, they're not bots like some people. Right, right. My followers are actual humans. And so I was like, well, I just, I'm not going to apologize for like talking about an experience that I had that was relevant to my audience and I didn't name no name. So right. come at me, bro. Exactly. <laughs> If the shoe fits, wear it. Exactly. Okay, so we let's get back to this phenomenon, this new phenomenon. Zombie we talked eight. about ghosting, and we talked about zombing. Now, there's this new trend called quiet dumping. Mm. Okay. And so this is an article from Glamour Magazine. Uh, quiet dumping, what they're calling is a cross between quiet quitting and ghosting. Mm. So if you don't know what quiet quitting is... It's related to the workplace. So somebody who is quiet quitting is basically like, fuck this job. I'm done. I don't want to get fired, but I'm also not going to do anything above what is required to keep my job. Right. So I'm going to do the bare minimum and I'm going to be actively looking for other opportunities, but I'm going to keep it civil here at work. I think we've all I'm been out. guilty of this. Oh, yeah. Right? I, I mean, literally there's nothing wrong with that. Quiet it's... quitting since I started working at 22. It feels like a little <laughs> bit of like... <laughs> you're, you're being a little grimy, but at the end of the day, you know, if the workplace that you're at, that you're leaving is toxic and, yeah. you know, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So now quiet dumping is basically this trend that is now being transferred to the dating world. So somebody who is quiet dumping their partner gradually distances themselves without seeking an open conversation about breaking up, hoping that the other person will become aware of the problem on their own and in the best case, end the relationship. 
Passive, on their own. passive aggressive. Exactly. So it's somebody who like, I'm done with this relationship, but I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't want to break up with this person, but I'm going to slowly remove myself. You know, I'm going to find reasons why we can't chill. Um, I'm just going to be doing some fuck boy, fuck girl shit, you know, just to kind of irritate them, kind of get on their nerves so that they get to a point where I'm like, I'm done. And then it helps me get out of the relationship, but I don't have to actively have this awkward ass conversation of like, Hey, I want to break up. It feels a lot like avoiding, not really the confrontation or the conflict, but avoiding the accountability of the fact that you want to get out. Yeah. You know, I think it's sort of gaslighting It right? is because you're kind of, you're warping this person's reality now to benefit you in some way. You're right. going to create this fucking chaos because you're not grown enough to have a conversation. Right. And it's kind of insane. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That's, uh, I mean, I know it's tough, but like Janice said earlier, you can always just send a text, you know? I mean, it's a lot easier to send a text. Yeah. It's pretty, it, it's even easier to ghost somebody, right? But yeah. I think it comes back, though, to like bad energy in the world. What you were saying around just folks not being okay with conflict and just not being okay with the negative emotions that happen right. in, in life. Right. Yeah, like I, I mean, as a guy, I mean, we all know it's it's hard to see our girl cry, and it's hard to be the one that makes them do that, and then have to be the one that you know come up with answers and resolutions for for that whole thing too, you know. So then, you know, a situation like breaking up, like I said, if I'm already if I'm willing to have the conversation, I'm checked out. So now I have to go through all those things I just said. Yeah, you know, got to go through the the conflict, got to watch the cry, got to go through the the guilt and the, and the you know feels shitty. But also, still know in the end of my heart, like in the back of my mind, like this is done. Yeah, we're not gonna be doing this much longer. <laughs> How have you had that conversation in the past? Like, are you the type to just be like, you know, I think we should just move on? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like the first, the first girlfriend that I had went for like six years or something, uh, twenty-one to twenty-seven. Um, it was like a mutual thing, you yeah. know, I mean, that ended up like the way that it did, but it was very mutual, very cordial, you know, we, I guess it was just kind of done. Um, you were living together. Yeah. yeah so yeah. how did you have the conversation about like, who's going to move out and blah, blah, blah. Um, I had more financial stability. I had more financial means. Um, so I, I just left her with everything. I left her with the, the furniture and, you know, everything even the dog the husky too I, I left him as well um just because like i was gonna restart i just got done with the business and stuff so i was like look and i had gotten her the dog really it was our dog but it was one of those things yeah. so um but that was a cordial thing and then the second one was kind of toxic but that's how it had to end because i would go through these conversations where i'm mentally checked out emotionally checked out i don't really want to do this but then you know, during the COVID, it's the lockdown and there's, you know, the crying and then the, when it's good, it's good. And it was just it the emotional was, roller coaster. Yeah. Like that one, you can't really have the conversation. So when the last incident happened and she was reaching out, trying to have conversation like we had always done before and I was just cold turkey, you know, she was hitting me with long page, long text about you know, how it's fucked up that I'm like abandoning her now. Mm. And we've been through so much. How could I just stop talking to her and blah. And by the way, I didn't ghost her. Right. I mean, this was a slow drip of like incidents that pile up. Yeah. Hey, we have some stuff in the same apartment. Like we, there was some communication that had to happen over some stuff. Right. You got to, you know, you get this, you can have that, whatever. Um, but once that was once that was done and everything was was separated, it was you know let's talk about this and we deserve to have. She kept using the word closure a lot. Mm -hmm. I really want closure. I want closure, and I'm like, well, like no offense, but like you kind of fucking suck. You know, like you're <laughs> super fucking toxic. You don't know anything about what's going on and, and and you know how to be a normal fucking person yeah it's just not it's just not what i want yeah. you know you're gonna be good for somebody else but just not me mm -hmm. so but she wasn't weren't she wasn't there for all that yeah and so that one would have been better to just kind of do the uh silent quitting you know i think back to my own breakups and <laughs> i, I was definitely a ghoster quit. I was definitely a fucking I, ghoster. I called it, folks. I told you. I was oh like, God. I know she's ghosted. She's a ghosting type. You're a ghoster. 
I well, I don't like conflict. And we've talked about this on other relationship. I mean, on, on other episodes of this podcast, like I just a conflict is not my thing. So I remember my high school boyfriend that I kind of carried into the summer before freshman year of college. I just fucking stopped calling him. I stopped talking to him, you know, because this just was like, easier back then, too. because it, it wasn't was. like everybody had text messages. No. And, and I'm like, I don't even know. I mean, I guess I had a cell phone, but. You know, it was like, it was like one of those, and... yeah, you got to like wait till after nine o'clock and shit to get like free minutes and stuff. Yeah. So he was like super toxic. He got very jealous, especially when I moved off to college. He thought I was going to fucking cheat on him, you know, super Which typical means... Cuban dude, you know, fucking machista, all that shit. So I was like, this is ghetto. Like I'm going to college. I'm here to like live my life and explore who I am. That's like I'm not is. here to deal with your bullshit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gone. And then, um, my ex before my husband, he was, it was a long distance relationship because he was deployed in the military right. off and on. Right. So it was much easier to break up and just like ghost in that scenario because like you're not even in the same physical proximity with somebody. So I just literally just stopped talking to him at. And um, when it came to my ex husband, like I, when I found out that he'd been cheating basically like the entire fucking relationship, um, I went, I had to go cold turkey because I knew if like I let him back in, we're going to have these stupid ass conversations about like, oh, it'll never happen again. And right, right, you know, right. I, it was a moment of weakness, even though it's like, no, bro, this is just who you are as a fucking person. Right. So I, when I found out that morning, like I went and changed the locks on the house because I'm like, he ain't coming back in this house. I grabbed <laughs> all of his shit. I threw it all in the garage. So I'm like, he has no reason to literally walk in this house because I don't even want to see his fucking face. Damn, dude. And when he showed up, you know, he's toxic, texting me, whatever. I was like, I'll open the garage door. You can get your shit. Anything that you can't take right now, it's going in a U-Haul pod. Damn. And it was, that's exactly how it went. You did him better than most of these Latinas out here. That that Those clothes would have ended up in the fucking driveway covered in bleach and on fire. Yeah, I mean, I really could have pulled like a Madeira... Um, Medea. the Tyler Perry's Diary of a Mad Black Woman, where she like literally destroys all his shit and like you know steals all his money, but there was nothing to steal. So, um, <laughs> you did it to yourself, my guy. I don't yeah. know if you're out there listening, man. I mean, learn from your mistakes. You know, it's, yeah. You don't have to be s- stuck in your ways, but you fucked off. So yeah. So that was a. I had to do it that way because there was no other way. Like it was just like a purging of the energy and the spirit and the fucking vibes that were here. I'm like, no, it just needs to get the fuck away from me. So, you know, you got to handle things the way that you handle it, you know, according to the relationship. But I think as far as like how you would handle being quiet dumped, like if you feel like your partner is mentally checked out, like you're going to feel that unless you're just completely fucking oblivious, right? Yeah, yeah. I felt it whenever we had our little thing at the at the Colombian restaurant. Yeah, a I was little bit. I was definitely like just You were just off. yeah, you were just checked out, you know what I mean? And I could feel the energy was there, but it it is what it is. I mean, it was early in the dating, so it was Yeah, and like, it was all my trauma too, just around I wasn't like I was really worried about it. Mhm. Um so if you feel like you're being quiet dumped, you should listen to your gut, confront your partner and don't let them dismiss you. Um your feelings are valid. Even though if somebody tries to deny them, right? If you confront somebody and you're just like, well, why do I feel like you're just like not here anymore? You're mm-hmm. trying to find excuses and they're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. If you know, you know. You right. know, you know when shit changes. Yeah. And I mean, usually when it gets like that, it's a lot of times there's somebody else in that fucking phone. Mm. Like when they're emotionally checked out or mm-hmm. like mentally checked out as far as being there in the present. You're like, okay, well, if you're not mentally checked in here with your body right now where we're at and you're fucking at, you're living in avatar land somewhere, who the fuck are you <laughs> in avatar metaverse. land? Let me see the phone. <laughs> Let me see the phone. What's his name? What are, you, who, what are y'all talking about? I yeah. bet you there's some fucking emojis and shit in that conversation too. That's so true. You know, that's one of those things that I think I didn't want to confront when I was with my ex. It was just like, we would barely talk to each other. You know, people even were like, are you still in a relationship? Because we never see this fucking guy. Damn. I would go to like family events, weddings, vacations, all the things. And he would never be around. Mm. And so it got to the point where it's just like, are y'all still together? And it's like, yeah, on paper, but emotionally, mentally, hell no. This shit's been done. Yeah. And so it's just like, I think it's it's a hard thing to confront when you realize that like shit has gone to that point and that other person has no fucking interest in rehabilitating it. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, at this point, my advice to anybody who's going through that is just like, yo, rip that bandaid off. Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's yeah. going to suck. It's going to feel shitty. But 
what is worse than being in a whole ass relationship with a person who's like literally not even fucking there? Right. Just like a warm body. Yeah. It's crazy. It that is. for me is like worse than just being alone. I guess. Like being lonely in your house with somebody else is worse than being really actually lonely because there's nobody there. Yeah, I guess you're right. Because then like, you know, you always have that thing of this thing lingering there and yeah. you're just like, damn, this fucking guy. Like I hated being home after a while. Yeah. Because I'm just like, this shit, the fucking energy in here is so weird. Like my anxiety is all activated and shit. It's like, nah. It sucks to break up, but sometimes, I mean, I think 99 times out of 100, you will look back and say, yeah, I'm glad that shit happened. Mm, yeah, I think so too. I mean... I would change a couple of like things about how certain things were gone about, but at the end of the day, all in all, the lessons that were learned, I'll take the lessons. Yeah. Maybe not the way they were delivered, but yeah. we don't necessarily get to <laughs> like, choose. The execution could have been better, but that's all up to God. So Yeah, I didn't need no bitch showing up in my house talking about I'm in a whole ass relationship with your <laughs> husband. Like I could have opted out of that if I had the choice. But also I do feel like I needed that punch in the face from the universe and be like, bitch, what are we doing? Sometimes that's what we need, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, whether it's a relationship or, you know, um, a lot of people getting laid off right now, mm -hmm. people that have been in careers and stuff, your yeah. friend, your friend's going through this, right? Um, you know, people have committed their lives to a certain thing, you know, and, and then all of a sudden they come in and they're like, here's a severance, mm -hmm. you know, good luck. You can't work for six months. Yeah. So, you know, it is tough. It is tough. Yeah. My mentor, Farnoosh Tarabi, she's a big podcaster and a money guru. Um, she came out with a new book recently where she talks about all these different fears that people navigate and how we have to like kind of spin the way that we see fear because mm -hmm. a lot of us try to avoid it. And one of the fears that we try to avoid is like the fear of endings. Mm -hmm. And she's spinning it. It's like every time there's an ending, that makes space for something else. Yeah. And when you think about like all the things that have had to end in your life, whether it's a career or a relationship or whatever – Usually something better does come out of that. Mm -hmm. Once you have that perspective and the amount of time that you need to like grieve that loss and whatever, I have never had something end that I've later been like, fuck, I wish that was still around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, I mean, yeah, I guess you're right about that. You know, everything does come to an end and it does start over with something new. I guess it's a little different with like a family member yeah, or something, yeah. right? But yeah. Other than that, as far as like friendships or relationships or even jobs and stuff, yeah, I mean, when none those, of it. I would when go they're back bad, to. it's okay to like for those things to go away. Yeah, and even yeah, it's like I wouldn't go back to that either. You yeah, know? I'll take all the lessons. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yeah. So out of those three things, zombieing, yes, ghosting, and quiet ghosting, and quiet, 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 quiet dumping, quiet dumping. Yeah. So out of those three. Which one would you choose if you were on the receiving end? Oh, God. Like, if we were to break up, how would you like it? None of the above. <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'd hope we'd have a civil conversation because that's on what podcast. adults do. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a breakup episode, y'all. Um, Toxic. None. It's all fucking gaslighting. It's all just like emotional manipulation and like that mental warfare shit. Would you want someone to be like brutally honest and be like, point out all the things that they don't like no. about you? Like no. Like just pick you apart and pet peeves and all this shit? No. I don't like the way you walk. And I don't God, like that. That's fucking terrible too, but also. Some at the people same are like that. Yeah, some people get real fucking petty when it comes to breakups. You I walk just feel weird. like, just be like normal. You know, I, I'm just not feeling this anymore. You know, something civil mm. like you don't want to be that person that just causes like emotional chaos to somebody for no fucking reason right right because nothing about you critiquing them you know is gonna help because at the end of the day if they have shit that's messed up about them they have to be the ones to want to fix it yeah, yeah it's true um you can tell somebody they're toxic all fucking day but if they don't believe it they're just gonna be like well fuck you then I think a good exercise for someone who might be getting ready to do a breakup and that uh, uh, particularly long one that's going to be kind of hard for them or whatever yeah. is I think I would write down what I wanted to say or <laughs> at least like I would get my phone on the notepad app and I would just voice text into my phone just my side of the conversation. Mm -hmm. What I want to say, what I want to deliver, you know, however that comes out and then listen back to it. 
And I'm telling you, that's actually really big because you'll be like, damn, I forgot to put this in there. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I don't need to say that because that's just attacking. You know, I don't need to say that because that sounds... Because when you're talking about it, you're getting passionate. It's easy to let something slip. Like it's true. You're a fucking bitch. Yeah. But so it's nice to be able to go back and be like, no, no, no. Let's take that out of there. Even though still fucking bitch. I like to rehearse <laughs> things in the shower. We actually don't rehearse anything for the show. No, but, but I like to rehearse like hard conversations or things that I know are going to be conflict, like in the shower. And I'm just pretending like I'm talking to this person. And um, if I like how it sounded when it came out, then I'm like, okay, this works. Damn. <laughs> Janice is over here writing songs in the shower. <laughs> all my best ideas come in the shower. I'm pretty sure the idea for this podcast came in the shower, too. That's how Taylor Swift makes all her songs. Yeah. <laughs> she just dates, breaks up. The breakup queen. And then writes in the shower. Listen, if you're going to be breaking up with a bunch of people, at least make a fucking multi-million dollar career out of it like Taylor Swift. I can't, I can't hate on her methods. Honestly, I'm thinking about becoming a, a breakup coach. <laughs> I have That's a, so good. I have a six-step course. Okay. And I'm going to teach you four ways guaranteed to clean break and leaves all parties happy. I'm here for it. I want to learn. Yeah. You just say it's over. <laughs> That's step number one. <laughs> step number two is get your shit. Step number three is leave. And step number four is it's block. She gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying I'm that. I'm here for it. You got to trademark that. But... <laughs> no, it's a thing I heard. <laughs> It's something I heard. Somebody, he kept saying it in like one of the videos. It must be something trending, I think. <laughs> a TikTok thing. Oh, that was good. All right. So quiet dumping is trash. You know, TLDR. Um, don't do it. It's crazy. And um, let's t- hop into our conversation about is marriage obsolete in this day and age? Obsolete or a dying trend? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's. I mean, what are your thoughts on it? For like, what made you want to talk about it what what brought it up for you yeah so you know we've been talking about just like obviously y'all this is all very new um nowhere near getting married but obviously you have these conversations with people as time goes on yeah and um i know that when we first started talking about it you were kind of just like well it's never been a thing for me it's never been a goal for me right yeah Whereas obviously I have been married, I have been divorced, I come from parents who are still married now in like 43 years. Right. A lot of my family members are married like long term. I actually don't have anybody on either side, my mom's sister or my dad's brothers and sisters, who are divorced. The only people who are not together is because they became widows, you know, mm-hmm. and they just didn't remarry. And that typically happens usually with the women in the family, you know. Um, one of my aunts lost her husband, I want to say a year ago, and she is not going to move on. She's in her seventies. She's kind of just like, my life is dedicated to Jesus at this point. Right. Um, and my grandmother, the same thing. She lost her, my grandfather when she was in her late fifties and she's been alone ever since then. Mm -hmm. So those are the only people that are like not partnered, but it's obviously because they just lost their, their partner. So Marriage to me always just kind of was the default expectation. Like you just marry somebody like that's just what you do as a woman. You find your person and that's it. Now being on the other side of things where I've been through it, I'm kind of just like it actually doesn't fucking mean anything from the sanctity of like a relationship. Mm. So when two people are committed to each other, it doesn't matter, matter if there's a paper or not. You know, they're going to be about it. And if they're not committed to each other, it doesn't matter how many fucking years they've been married. It doesn't mean anything. Right. I think now what I understand about marriage is that it is literally like just a government contract that dictates how your assets get split up. Yeah. And I mean, there are some benefits to it as well. Yeah, there's tax benefits, right? Yeah. You know, and then I'm sure there's loans or something. I don't know. You know, I guess it's a, it is a good move, you know, if you're planning on building something with the person and stuff like that, you know, but, um, for me, I mean, my dad and, and his wife have been married for 20 something years and she was always there when I was growing up. I watched them date for like five, six years before they got engaged and married. So, um, my mom, she's getting married next month, which is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, that's going to be crazy. Um, they've been together for almost like 10 years i want to say they've been together for a long time so it's it's about time for them um and then she actually she has a another couple friend that that i grew up with named billy and christy and they've been engaged for like 26 27 years Mm, so they've never actually pulled the trigger no they're just like this beach 
vibe couple and yeah. he like sings karaoke on the beach you know has his little spots where he goes and plays and anyway so they I, I remember asking my mom as a kid about that because you know my I would ask her naturally like well when are you going to get married mm-hmm. you know dad's married you know I'm a little kid and then she's like well not everybody has to get married and then she told me about them and I was like what I'm like that's because I thought as a kid you know that's what it was mm-hmm. um but as a you know growing up and stuff like that I mean I've thought about like I've pictured getting married or like if I watch like a show or something about it, I kind of picture like maybe walking down the aisle or being the one standing up there. But then I start thinking about who am I going to have there? You know, I don't have like a huge circle of friends or a lot of my family's broken up, too. So I I don't know. It's like for me, I don't think my my wedding would ever be like a picturesque big grand spectacle. No, it wouldn't even be like that, you know, so I don't know. Not that it. It's just nothing that I, I never really thought about. It's yeah. never been anything that's been festering in me to like want to do. I don't feel like it's a check, like a box that I have to check off as far as like my existence as a man. Mm-hmm. You know, some people have that with kids as well. You know, they're like, I need to get married and I need to have kids. Those yeah. are like my two check boxes in life. And that's cool. I, I, I respect that, but I never had it. Now, did you have a negative connotation of marriage at any point? No. I mean, besides the fact that my parents like, were divorced but I was a baby when that happened and that was all child love anyways so but never had anything bad I mean I always had pretty good examples I mean you know you see you know friends parents get divorced Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so obviously you know that's a thing but I think watching my mom be like kind of somewhat single you should always have like steady relationships but there was three or four maybe from when I was a little kid till till mark now but um I don't know. I never really had anything bad about it. I never like thought against it. Just like I didn't think about getting married. I never thought against it either. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't in my thing. I thought about, I've thought about kids more than I've thought about being married. Yeah. I, I think over, I've always pictured myself like when I have kids and stuff, I always picture like myself at the park with my kid. Mm-hmm. But that's how I grew up with my dad. Yeah. You know, my dad was like a single dad and then taking me to the park and teaching me how to ride my bike while he's riding a skateboard. Like, yeah. So I'd always picture that, you know, mm-hmm. I don't ever picture like the family of four sitting down and, you know, mm-hmm. but I'm always open to it. I don't, I don't mind it. I think that if I ever got married though, it would be more on the other person, you know, oh, something that you would, something, that... something you wanted more than, okay. not that I'm like settling or whatever, but it's just like, if I know I'm committed to the relationship and I don't want to go anywhere and I know that that's something that's important to you then let's go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So do you think that marriage is like, do you think it should be a deal breaker for people? Right. Because I know that you had a relationship where that was a conversation that came up and you were not ready for it. And you presume that that was part of why things started to dissolve. Yeah. She was one of those, she was one of those women that um, comes from an old school, traditional like Serbian, Bosnian, heritage so it was like find a man get married have babies you know stay at home mom that kind of deal and that was cool you know I was kind of there for that but um you know like I said she just had those those boxes to check off as a woman it wasn't even like society or anything Mm -hmm. it was just like her DNA was just like I need to commit myself to a man and I need to have kids yeah so when we had been together for four and a half, five years, you know, she's kind of, she's starting to chirp a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, she's watching me build the business and stuff. And then, you know, she's like, well, let's, you know, let's get married or whatever. Mm-hmm. How, how come we haven't gotten married or how come we're not engaged? You know, she would point out other people. Oh this God, person I did the same looking, shit. My friend just got engaged and they've been together for six months and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, mm. okay. <laughs> um, so I don't know if it should be a deal breaker. I think. I just think that if everybody's aware of how much it means or doesn't mean yeah. and just always factor in the other person, you know, if it's something that someone's kind of like doesn't want to do, maybe they have trauma from like divorce or yeah. something then I might not want to push it on them or be like, okay, well let's at least get engaged mm-hmm. and then we can be engaged for three or four years. Yeah. If that's what you want to do. Some people need to take their time, especially with like a life. If they're taking marriage serious, it's a lifelong thing. So, you take as much time as you need, you know? I mean, you guys can have babies whenever, right? So, and that's already a marriage as, you know, in its own way. So, 
Um, I think women in particular have some reservations about having children without being married because then it's just like, well, that the fact that you're not married is like you're not taking us seriously, right. right? You're like baby mama versus like wife. Right. So I think, you know, for some women, like it, it's a must for that, from that perspective, especially if they want to become moms. But as it should be, you know, I mean, yeah. I would want that as a woman too. I would want the commitment from, from a man. I would, you know, especially if I'm going to let him put his fucking kid inside me yeah. and I'm going to carry this fucking kid around, you know, this guy's out here going fishing with his buddies and shit and I'm just sitting at the house with swollen feet. Baby moms. Eating fucking fried pickles or something. <laughs> but like, you know, it, you know, I would want that as a woman, you know, yeah. but I'm able to like put myself in the other person's shoes too. Mm-hmm. Like growing up, you know, my, my parents were always about like, yeah, you have a voice, but as much as you have a voice, everybody else does too. Mm-hmm. So it's like your, your voice doesn't need to be louder. You know, yeah. as long as you say your point, it is, it is what it is. So yeah. I just would always factor in the other person no matter what. Yeah. After getting divorced, I swore up and down and I was like, I'm never doing this shit again. This is ridiculous. This yeah. is a fucking waste of time. I think my mind has definitely changed about that. <laughs> you know, us being together and just feeling like, oh, wow, like not every man out here is a piece of shit. It's just, right. I just happen to pick the wrong one. Um, but knowing what I know now, I would say that I was definitely on that same vibe of like, oh, well, we've been together four years. This is just the natural order of things. Mm-hmm. There was not a lot of thought about like, are they going to be a good husband? It was just like, this is just who I'm with. Right. And we live together at this point. So naturally this is just what needs to happen. Yeah. I think a lot of people can tend to like fall into that kind of autopilot with the relationship and not really having that self-reflection of, is this actually a person who is like me worth committing to just because of Mm -hmm. X amount of time that I've been with them. Right. It's hard to make that decision of just like, well, this isn't gonna, this is not the person for me, even though I've been here for a while. And I think, unfortunately, that's why a lot of relationships end up in divorce, because there's just not that forethought, you know, that's happening. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the divorce rate, that's one thing. But if you could look at a simulated divorce rate with parents in general, you know, if we could treat their breakup as a divorce because they have the kid, that's a that's a lifelong thing. So um, I feel like that that divorce rate in it's quotes would be really high. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many people that um, had, a, had a quick fling or had a girlfriend for a year when they were young, next thing you know, they're pregnant, they're having the kid, it's struggle bus, you know, then all of a sudden they're breaking up and, you know, she's having, you know, two, three other kids with somebody else and whatever, not that that matters, but it's, it's very common. It's very common and just fuck around bring a a whole ass human into the world who's going to be an adult one day but it's fun to just fuck around and you know there's real consequences yeah i mean i've i've always been more afraid of a of a kid than i have been of of getting an std Mm -hmm. like hooking up and shit you know i mean like not that i was unprotected but it was just like one of those things where it was even more of an emphasis for me i was just like oh i couldn't have a kid now Mm -hmm. i'm 31 and i'm just like I don't think, I don't think I could have a kid right now. I, mean, <laughs> you know, I got to get to the bag a little bit. Here. Our freedom means a lot to us too. So it's one of those things where every time I think like, yeah, I'd love to be a mom. I'm also just like, fuck. I've seen time and time again, how the relationship satisfaction for a lot of people goes way down, especially in those first couple of years, just because you're like chronically exhausted you're spending so much money, mm-hmm. you know, your, your attention is diverted away from each other because you're just trying to keep this human being alive. And, um, I think a lot of relationships suffer if you don't have like a really strong support system in the beginning, because there's just so much being asked of both people, you know? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> so the, to wrap this conversation up around marriage, I, if I were to do it again, it would definitely not be the grand spectacle, 150 people, you know, $60,000 that it was the first time around. It would, I would probably literally be that person that people get a card from at Christmas talking about, Hey, hi, I got married. <laughs> you know? I mean, it could be a thing, right? I don't so, know. um, that's probably how I'm going to go about it. Well, there you heard it here <laughs> first, folks. You guys will just have to be looking into the camera to see if you pop, if you see a ring pop up you never know <laughs> might not even be a ring yeah exactly 
All right, so it's our favorite time of the show. It's y'all's favorite time for the show, yes. of the show. We're going to be diving into our Reddit thread of the week. But before we do that, just want to remind you to support our sponsor of the show, yep. BetterHelp. Um, therapy is actually cool nowadays. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like super trendy to get therapy. It's super trendy to be like working on yourself mm -hmm. and so if this is something that you have been thinking about all you have to do is head over to betterhelp.com slash corazon and you get 10 percent off your first month get that and uh if you're one of those people who's going through one of these you know si silent quitting mm -hmm. zombieing um you're gonna need to talk to somebody about that hells yeah y'all that's one of the first things i did when i filed for divorce i got a fucking therapist because <laughs> let me tell you it's not easy to yeah, break up but having not. that support is really important so again betterhelp.com slash corazon and you get 10 percent off boom okay so do you want me to read this one i do all right so i think the deal is guys is one of us finds it and we have the other person read it it's the first time um, for the first time, sorry. So I'm gonna put it up on the screen for you guys, like I did last time. Hopefully you, hopefully you still like that. <laughs> yes, I actually didn't really like dive too much into this one before I sent it to you. Mm. Like I skimmed it so that I would have the opportunity to react to. So okay, let's go. Well, it's not too long, so we'll just uh, knock this out real quick. Bear with me, folks. Okay, this "Am I the asshole?" thread says, "Am I the asshole for telling white lies to my partner?" My husband, 38, and I, 31, have been married 11 years, together about 12 and a half. For some background, I was a foster kid and adopted when I was about seven. My adoptive parents were wonderful, but those first seven years were really bad. My husband grew up with his mom and stepdad. They married when he was two, and it was pretty verbally abusive. His stepdad has an explosive ten temper, and yelling fights were pretty regular at his house. Not just between his parents, but him with his parents and brother, too. Sounds like the whole house was toxic. Mm. My reaction to yelling is usually shaking and crying, you know, trauma and all that. <laughs> I can relate, <laughs> Yeah, sis. you can relate, right? <laughs> so with that background, I have been known to tell lies every now and then. Never about anything big, but things like, oh, what, that was a gift, when really it was money saved from a gift that was used to buy the thing. So technically, yes, but also literally no. Or maybe I'll say, yeah, I totally switched out the laundry when I haven't done it yet but I'm going to before he gets home. Okay. <laughs> the white lies are right. a thing. All right. In the past, when he's gotten angry, he's yelled at me, not across the room, close to me. I don't, like, I don't like how that feels, and I don't like how I physically respond when he yells. So sometimes to save myself an argument or a lecture, I'll lie. And of course, he always finds out and then gets mad at me anyway. My biggest issue is that he says, if I'm willing to lie about the little things, then I'd be willing to lie about the big things as well but I don't feel like an occasional white lie to keep the vibes chill is wrong. So am I the asshole? Mm. And then he says, then she says, husband thinks all lying, even white lies are wrong and has a very loud reaction to that feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks. Mm. All right. I can absolutely like, I feel like you've been in this woman's shoes. Well, I would definitely say that I can, relate because when i was a kid like i would definitely lie to not get in trouble for shit just because i knew i was gonna get into some shit we all would right yeah that was what started our lying in the first place yeah. is to make sure our ass didn't get I'm smacked like, i don't want to get my <laughs> ass beat so i'm just gonna make up the story and Facts. then when they find out that it's a lie anyway like obviously i'm still gonna get my ass beat and probably yeah. worse but it's fine hey. um so i get why her reaction or her attempt to you know, avoid conflict is defaulting to like white lies as we're calling it. Mm -hmm. But I also do see the husband side where it's just like you, I know you've said this a lot, like how you do one thing is how you do most things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when somebody's capable of just being dishonest, it's like, who's to say where you draw that line, right? It's like, yeah. well, I'm just saying I'm not going to tell them that I had like this affair with this guy that I met at the bar when I got drunk one night because I don't want to fight. You know, this is like, what are you capable of hiding? Wow. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I kind of see where she's coming from, yeah. but at the end of the day, I think that I don't know how their roles or di their dynamic is in their relationship, but I, I treat my woman like 50, 50. Right. So I think that your voice is, is equal as mine. So I think that with that being said, I would encourage her to, to tell him, mm. like, be like, look, I'm, 
I'm not going to, this is why I lie or yeah. whatever, you know, and, and the reason why I'm lying is because, and I know that that's kind of gaslighting, right? Well, the reason I lie is because you make me lie because of the way you make me feel. Mm. And that's, that's a toxic thing too. There's no accountability, but I just think that if they had an established grounds for being able to commun communicate about certain things without there always having to be a toxic reaction, maybe he doesn't realize, maybe he's so used to having those reactions that he doesn't know he does it over everything. Yeah. Right. So maybe you could catch him and be like, ah, you're doing that thing again. I we're just, we're just talking about what we're going to have for dinner <laughs> and you're over here freaking out. Yeah. Can you just pipe it down a little bit? We're, mm -hmm. we're just talking and maybe he'll be like, oh yeah, I fucking, I'm an asshole. Cause I know if someone was doing that to me. I'd be like, Oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm being an asshole for no reason. But you're also way more self-aware than like the average person. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, first of all, I'm like, they need a therapist. They need to go to betterhelp.com slash go to song. <laughs> um, but honestly, like, I just feel like they both have traumas that they have not healed yeah. that are getting in the way of them having communication that can actually help them fix the issue. Right. Because if, yeah. if husband confronts his tendency to explode and learns a different way to communicate, Right. That's going to help this chick not be so fucking triggered when they have conversations because she knows that when I confront my husband about things, he's not going to blow up at me. Right? right. So that fixes that problem. And then for her, when she realizes that I don't need to lie because he's not going to have that explosive reaction. So I can actually just be honest from the get mm -hmm. is going to fix everything. Right. It's like they're in a toxic swirl of like he's got trauma. She's got trauma. They haven't figured out how to heal it so that they can have healthy conflict. Right. And so it's just leading to all this shit that now it's bringing uh, the trust into question. It's mm -hmm. bringing, you know, unnecessary issues that are essentially rooted in childhood trauma that's not addressed. Yeah, I agree. And I also think that, you know, I, I, I think I sided with the wife in that a little bit, but I will play devil's advocate and side for the man too. I, I think that he has a point about there being the lies thing. Mm -hmm. I think that if he's putting emphasis and, and stuff on the lies, then that usually means that he's probably being pretty honest with her about mm -hmm. most things, mm -hmm. you know, because that, you know, he feels like he has to be honest with her versus, you know, she's not quite on board with that. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that if they got rid of that kind of like that void a little bit, I mean, I, th I bet you they'd be a lot closer. Their yeah. sex would probably be better. Like it just kind of trickles down, you know, it's yeah. They both have work to do to get to a place where they are not triggering each other's traumas. And it's going to have to take each one of them making that decision to just be like, I know this is causing issues in my relationship. I know this is not the best way to conduct myself. And if I want this to work, I'm going to individually like take responsibility for the shit that I'm bringing here and I'm going to fix it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that obviously we've talked about this before, but communication is key no matter what. And that's yeah. with anything, any relationship, any friendship, any job, whatever. I mean, hell, even when you have an apartment or a landlord and maybe you lose your job or maybe you get hurt or you're a little tight on money. Even an apartment complex will tell you, just communicate with us. Just let us know. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll let you slide. They might waive the fees. Like, it's the open communication. It's the honesty. It's the accountability. People fuck with that. People like that. People like when someone just stands there with their chin out and is like, I, I own that. I did that. It was, you know, the, the reasons for it don't matter because I'm the one. These, these are the hands that did it. So... Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't do anything about that. Yeah. And, and a lot of that shit goes a long way with a lot of people. So, uh, I think with her, if I was her and I felt the need to do the white lies and stuff, I would a try to work on obviously not doing stuff. That's going to make me do the white lie or I would work on maybe You're toning down the white lies a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're, maybe they're pretty wrap it maybe mm. she's doing it a lot yeah uh, over like stuff maybe she doesn't need to do and then that's getting a annoying for him he's like you're you're lying about putting the clothes in the dryer yeah. like why are we doing that yeah. you're my wife i gotta be able to trust you yeah. like in a life or death situation i gotta be able to look in your fucking eyes and know what you're about to do mm -hmm. so i i get it from his perspective but yeah i think she needs to if i was a therapist i'd be like ma'am you need to work on cutting out your white lies However you do that, and then, sir, you need to come see me with one-on-one -on -one consultation. Tone down the fucking reaction. 250 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, 
this was a good episode. We talked about a lot. And so, um, yeah, I think my biggest takeaway from this conversation is, uh, don't be a toxic breaker upper, like be an adult, uh, because communication is like a must in relationships. How about you, Ben? What's your biggest takeaway? Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, being an adult, being an adult sucks. <laughs> it, it just does it's all, ghetto. all the way around. It sucks the credit, whatever, but the accountability is the one thing that sucks the most, okay? Everybody wants to stand up and claim the fucking prize, you know, whatever, but just the accountability, I think, is just, you know, if you own your shit, that will, it'll do do a lot for you subconsciously, right? You'll walk around, you'll feel lighter on your feet. You won't feel like you're having to bury these certain things in in the closet. You don't have to feel like, oh, well, what do I got to say? What did I say to this person about that thing? That whatever. You know what I mean? You have to keep tabs on people and lies and whatever. So the accountability thing would be huge. I do wanted to say, I did want to bring up, we've been watching the new Bachelor, the Golden Bachelor, Mm. right? Isn't it the Golden? Yes, on ABC. Okay, so... The Bachelorette, The Bachelor, they're 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 cool. They're a little cringy because they're super. They're they're scripted to be cringy. That's yeah. kind of like the the fun and the thing. But now, right? They always use younger people. But now they've chosen a man who's what? 70, He's like seventy two. Seventy one, seventy two years mm-hmm. old. Good silver, good looking silver fox guy. And then you know, and then they they packed him in the house with with twenty older women as well. Yep. Anywhere between like fifty five and seventy five. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and they're. It's crazy to see, you know, they, everybody's got hearing aids and stuff and nothing wrong with hearing aids. It's true. They were like, he was bonding with the one chick because she pulled her hair back and she had hearing aids too. So anyways, it, it was, it's a cool thing to see. I they, love it. A lot of them are widows. Okay. Yeah. And then he's a widower. Yeah. So he's a widower himself. His wife passed away yeah. abruptly from like cancer or something. But anyways, the, it's only two episodes out. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about. You know, my my de- my parents are both fifty now, mm-hmm. and I'm watching my mom get married to someone's a, a couple of years younger than her. But to what, see mom's my co- a cougar too, I'm here for it. Hey, you know, <laughs> um, but to see like to to see like maybe my grand my grandmother who has never been with anybody since my abuelo fucking thirty forty years ago, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, I just would be wild to be like, you know, I want you to meet my new man, and Dating I'd be like, in your sixties, your new man. But I, you know, for (laughs) me, it's so nice to see love like normalized in that age group, right? Because there's so much emphasis placed on relationships and love in our demographic, right? We're millennials, you know, anybody who's like basically like 28 to like 40 something. And I think with the way that the world is now with people getting divorced more often, with women being more financially independent and just having the option to walk away from relationships like i think this is kind of a revolutionary time for that older generation because you know they're they're like not dead you know they have like a whole ass life that they want to live and they don't want to be stuck in unsatisfying relationships and be unhappy and so they're like given more permission i think nowadays to just go out and like pursue happiness and go have that second or third or whatever number marriage and it's nice because you know, like, I think we're used to seeing, like, our grandmothers mm-hmm. where they become widows and they just give up. Yeah. And it's like, fuck that. You have life to live. And just because you're past a certain age doesn't mean that you're not entitled to love. Yeah, she, like, uh, she found, she replaced her love in that void with her relationship with God. Same. Right? So she was just, I mean, she's always been big about it, obviously, from, from the island and stuff. It's mm-hmm. a big thing. You know, yeah. you wear dresses past your knees and all that stuff. Um but yeah, I don't know. It'd be wild to see. I, I've been enjoying it. It's it's pretty cool. Um, usually when you're watching the younger versions, you know, everybody's... Uh, I kind of get grossed out. I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac, but right? That's the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so because like the younger folks, like the guy, let's say there's a guy with 20 women or vice versa, you know... They're sitting down with these people and they're like, oh, can I get a one on one? And then they're like, they have to go and they have to like talk for 10 minutes. And then at the end of the conversation, no matter what, they're always making out with this person. Somebody's getting a cold sore. I'm saying it's really wild because like they'll they'll have like the chick. Right. And she's like getting, you know, with all these guys. And then like the guys are just going back one by one. It's like a brothel. It's crazy. It really is. It's It's giving um, orchestrated orgies. Yeah. I feel like I'd be the one that would stand out and be like, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to kiss you until I make it to the end. Like if you're going to choose between me and another man, I'm, I'm going to make you wait on that. I'm glad you didn't make me wait on our first date. I had no choice. 
Yes, I you don't did. Choke. That's a lie. It you was, just wanted to kiss me. Se- sexual assault. Shut up. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, at least she, she did ask first. Though. I she, did ask. I was not all of like. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I think Louis C.K. asked too. Oh gosh. <laughs> He You're did. Terrible. He did. That's why it wasn't so bad. Lord Jesus. Okay, I'm going to wrap <laughs> this shit up, y'all. But if you haven't tuned into The Golden Pasture, go ahead and check it out. It's really good. And I just love seeing love in all ages and demographics. It's such a vibe. Yeah. Um, speaking of demographics, our next episode is going to be about dating within or outside of the culture. Facts. So we're going to be talking about kind of how our mindsets have been formed around that idea. And we're also going to have a special episode where we're talking to Julia Estakolchik. Mm-hmm. She is the senior director of brand marketing and the head of brand for Chispa at the Match Group, like Let's Match.com. go. Okay, so she's going to be talking about the Chispa app, which is the largest dating app for U.S. Latinos. And I get into a conversation with her just about like what makes the dating process different from us from a cultural perspective mm-hmm. and also how the Chispa app is kind of making um, this really cool space on the, you know, dating app world where instead of us being the minority on a lot of these apps, we're actually the majority on that app. So it's a really cool conversation and you guys definitely have to check that one out. Yeah, because I, I know that we met on Hinge, but maybe we can do a brand deal with her and we'll just be like, no, we actually met on Chispa. Yeah, no, I already told her we didn't, so Damn it. we can't milk that. Shit, but, you know. that's right. Not everything has to be that's about money. That's because I don't lie, right? I don't do the white lie. Not a white lie? <laughs> Hey, All right, y'all. Well, go. this has been fun. So uh, we'll see you next week. And if, of course, as always, if you're loving the show, please make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Yes. If you want to enjoy the audio version of this, you can check us out wherever you listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. And just make sure you're sharing this with your friends and family. We're getting awesome feedback from our listeners. We've already hit like over 2,000 downloads, which in like a three and a half month time span is very very quick it's growing it's growing steadily you know the it's this is what these things do you know these things take time and obviously we're not doing it for a cash grab or anything like that this is just something we wanted to do on the side and just having fun with it and that's usually how these things kind of blossom a little bit so i mean if it goes in a good direction great i mean if not we've got other irons in the fire i mean it's already going in a good direction so i feel really good about you know where this is going and also if you want us to answer your question on the show you can always send us an email at Corazon Chronicles podcast at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram. And we are now on TikTok at Corazon Chronicles. Hey, we made it. So go ahead and find us and follow us wherever you hang out on the internet. Yes. And also one last thing. So uh, Janice, along with the Yo Quero Dinero podcast, she has the Delish Delights. It's a food blog. Okay. And it's all about Puerto Rican cuisine, all kinds of stuff, but it's really geared and centralized towards Latino food. So she has a big blog, a big blog with with a bunch of posts. How many posts do you think? Over three hundred. Over three hundred posts, and <clears throat> that's great, right? But we just recently started filming cooking videos for these recipes now. So we just have our first episode that we did on Sunday, mm-hmm. and it's up live now. You have to go to the Delish Delights YouTube channel, and that's I'll put it on the screen right here. That way, you guys can actually see it. But it's Delights D L. I T E S. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, don't spell it regular, mm-hmm. but go there, check it out. It's a quick little three minute video of her making. Pollo guisado. Oh, it was so good. She had the white rice. It was amazing. I love the fact that you're such a supportive partner on all my like creative endeavors. Y'all. Um, this is a reminder that if your partner does not support you, they belong in the trash heap. So you can definitely quiet dump them with my mm. entire endorsement. Well, it was funny because <laughs> it was funny because she has the blog and she has all these things and it does really well, you know, and, and it's like a, it's like a little bit of a backbone for what she has going on. And I'm like, you know, she did have the, the, the small clips that some Croatian guy made or something. Right. But I was like, you've got 300 recipes. That's 300 cooking videos. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. And like, I have your support now, which is amazing. Yeah. And like I said, they're super quick. It's not like a barefoot Contessa. (laughs) 45 minute video okay it's that'll it's be the thing one day when we have a tv show <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna be your husband and just come in and check, check the food did y'all hear that we're definitely gonna clip that <laughs> but yeah i mean um i'm always so grateful for finding a partner who is supportive in all the ways and mm. um 
you know, just a reminder, y'all. There's good people out there. So don't settle for less. Yep. And fix yourself with better help. Better help. Absolutely. All right, guys. Love you so much. Have a great week. And we will see you uh, next week.